Alright, what's up guys? So in this video I'm going to give you a quick crash course on how to program, the basics of programming, and uh, object-oriented programming. This is basically everything you're going to learn in a computer science program in your first two semesters. Okay, so the language we're going to use is Java. Java, for beginners, in my opinion, Java is a great language to learn as your first language. Um, you like As a beginner, it really doesn't matter what language you learn, but Java, C Sharp, um, C, C++, I think those are all really good languages to learn as first languages just because they're strongly typed and they set you up for good fun or uh, good habits in the future and uh, you get some solid fundamentals from using languages like that. Okay, so what you're going to do is go to Google, type in Java JDK. You're going to get this Java SE Development Kit 8 downloads by Oracle. You're going to get this page. You're going to have all of these different um, pa uh, packages or versions of Java. Or you're going to have... Okay, you're going to install Java 8, okay? Just install whichever one you need for your system. Uh, if you have Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever it is, install it, save it somewhere. Next, you're going to do, you're going to go to jetbrains.com, go to IntelliJ, and then download the community version. If you have a .edu email address, you can download the Ultimate Edition. Um, if you do, I recommend using the Ultimate Edition. You get a lot more features, and you can use the Ultimate Edition for other things like uh, Android, uh, Java EE, Enterprise Edition, Spring, all kinds of stuff. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a new project. So you'll open up IntelliJ, create a new project. You'll have a, uh, a checkbox. You'll just name name it where whatever you want, uh, save it wherever you want, and you're going to have a checkbox that says create command line uh, app. Check that box and you're going to get something like this. Okay. So what I've done is I've just opened up a project from school that I've already used or that I've already created a long time ago. Um, so you're going to get something like this in that first file. And guys, I'm trying to go quick just because I know people, you know, people want information quick. Uh, they don't want to sit around, watch a 45 minute video. I don't know how long this is going to take, but there's kind of a lot that we're going to cover. So you're going to get something like this. You're going to get public static void main string args system dot out print line. Hello world. Okay. So if you run this program, we'll just run it again. Hello world down here. Okay. So you have this program is just printing hello world. So that's a lot of programmers, it's their first program that they ever create. So now let's get into the basics. So the smallest unit of any computer program is a variable. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna make some comments here. Just examples of variables, okay? So since Java is a strongly typed language, you have to declare or you have to specify what data type you're going to be using for the variable. So data types just show you, so you have int, which could be numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, 100, 101, 1001, any integer number, any integer value that's not a decimal, uh, you can have negative 25. Okay, those are examples of ints. Uh, you can have doubles, which is what you're going to use if you have a decimal point. Um, uh, 4.9, whatever. Okay, those are doubles. Strings in Java it's going to be a capital S. So strings are things like my name, Jake, 
Um, hello world. Okay, so strings are just words. Um, words or it's a string. Like that's that's what you're gonna know it to be. Okay, you got strings. Have floats. Floats are basically like doubles, except uh, they take up one of them. One of the two takes up more RAM. Uh, most of the time, I just use doubles uh, or more memory, I guess. So a float is pretty much the same as a double, just is stored in the computer differently. Uh, you have booleans, which is just true or false. Um, you have what else do you have? Ints, double strings, floats, booleans. Um, uh, that's good for now. All right. So in this program, what we're going to do is we are going to create squares. So the how programs work is they're basically just um, it's just calculation or storage or manipulation of data. So for this program we're going to create squares and we're going to calculate the area and the perimeter. And we're going to go through and do stuff with a square using all the fundamentals of programming and then move, work our way into an object oriented version of the program that we're about to build. Okay, so let's start making some variables. Okay, so double uh, side. We're going to make a side of a square. And we're going to say that the side is 4.5 units, whatever that may be. And then we're going to create a double as area. And area equals, since this is a square, since this is going to be a square, we're just going to say area equals side times side because area is just length times width and then we're going to do double perimeter and that can equal side times four okay since you have four sides um, you know, if you had, if you added all the sides together, it would just be 4.5 times 4. Okay, so here's our square. Okay, we've got some doubles as these variables here. So now, what if we wanted to, um, what if we didn't want to use a square? What if we wanted to do a polygon? Let's do this. Let's say that this is a polygon now. We'll do int number of sides equals, uh, let's say it's a pentagon. Okay, and right now we're just hard coding everything. You can look up, uh, uh, what is it, system.in for the input if you want to do user input okay so int number of sides is five so we can't make this four now we can just say number number of sides okay cannot resolve number of sides let me do this Let me do that. All right. And then something else about a program, if it's just written this way all inside of a main function, it goes from top to bottom. It just reads the code from top to bottom. Now, if you're in an object-oriented uh, environment, like if you're inside of a class, this is a class right here, um, you can create functions and they work, you know, no matter where they are because the functions are read into the memory, stored, ready for use. This is just one function that's reading, you know, from top to bottom. 
So we've got that side times side perimeter side times number of sides. Uh, I think area of a pentagon would be a little bit different than that. So, but you get the point. Int number of sides is five. Okay, you aren't gonna say you could say double number. Or if you changed this to a double, you just do 5.0. Okay, so let's get into something else. We've got some variables down uh, here. Let's let's add one more just for fun. Okay, so string um, shape name equals pentagon. Okay, so. I don't know why you would really name a shape, but uh, pentagons. All right. So let's do some conditionals. So a conditional statement is checking to see if something is true or if a value is in a certain range. You're, you're just checking if something is occurring. There's also uh, switch statements where if you had a lot of conditions, you'd use a switch. We're just going to use an if statement for now. So if number of sides is equal to five, System dot out dot print line. Shape name. So if number of sides, so that's always true. Um, but this is just a, an example. So if number size equals five, and also if you're trying to check values, you have to do the double equal signs. Um, if you just do this, it's like a declaration. So like up here, we're just saying number of size equals five. Here we're saying number of sides is equal to five. Or if we wanted to say not equal to five, we would do this exclamation point equal sign if number of sides is not equal to five or we could do number of sides is greater than or equal to five or we could do less than or equal to five so here let's do a do a comment up here for you so let's do let's just so you can do greater you can use all these symbols in your conditional statements um, not equal. Let me just do a new comment down here. Not equal. Do another one. Is equal. Mm, what else we got? Less than or equal to. or greater than or equal to. Okay, so let's uh, change this number size back to four and go back to square. Okay, so if number of sides is less than or equal to five, It'll print the uh, shape name. And also, I kind of messed up there. It shouldn't be inside of quotations. System.out.println and then variable name. That's just printing the variable name. If I did what I had, here, let's uh, talk about concatenating also. So if I did a plus sign and then shape name. Here, let's just run this. So if I printed shape name plus 
quotation mark shape name. This will give the name of the shape as a variable. So this will do square and then it'll have shape name just printed out because it's inside of quotation marks. And let's all let's do something else. Let's add that space there. So let me uh, print this here. Okay, so we got square shape name. So if we took out the space, these two would be attached. Okay, so now let's talk about the else word. Okay, so else Prince line. Um, this is not a square. So we'll print that. Okay, so all right. So now let's change this number of sides to five so it'll print out the else statement. So if this condition is not met, number of sides equals four, then this else. So if this is the case, then do this. Else, do this. Okay, so let's uh, run this again here. This is not a square. Okay, so now let's do something else. Let's talk about loops. So you've got four loops. Here, let's do another comment here. So you have four loops and you have while loops. Okay, so four loops. So let's just do a simple example. Okay, so this is how you set up your basic for loop. Uh, let's just do six times uh, is less than six. Um, I plus plus. So let's do. Uh, So if you type s out, it'll just put in system dot out dot print line. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put i in there. So we have int i equals zero. I is less than six. I plus plus. So what this should do is print out um, zero through five. So basically what you're doing, you're starting at zero, you're setting the ceiling to six, you're saying i is less than six. So it should stop at five, so it'll do zero through five. And then this i plus plus is just incrementing. Here, we'll put a little comment up here. So i plus plus increment, and then you can also do i minus minus, or if you want to increment or decrement any variable that's an integer, you can do you can do this to any variable. Say you had a variable called count. You could do count plus plus or count minus minus to decrement. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so zero through five. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So i is just keeping count. The for loop is basically just iterating a certain amount of times. So i is just the index. It's moving up until it hits the ceiling and then it'll kill the loop. It'll stop it. Okay. So for loops are very useful when working with arrays or array lists. We'll talk about those in the future. Or in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Okay, so now let's do a while loop. So, let's do this. So, let's, let's do that count thing. Int count equals 10. Okay, 
So we have int count. So while count is not equal to zero, s out. What the heck? All right. Well, I'll just type it out. System dot out dot print line. We're gonna do. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that decrement thing. So a while loop is kind of like a loop with an if with a conditional all in one. So while this condition is not met, it'll go through a loop. So if you're doing something like, um, if you ever get into algorithms, you'll talk about binary search. So a binary search uses a while loop because it's going until there's just no more data to cut through. So let's uh, let's run this. So basically what this is going to do is, well, count is not equal to zero, keep on doing this. Okay. And since this is decrementing, it should go, f it should print 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so that's a while loop. All right, so you've got conditionals, for loops, while loops. Now let's talk about arrays. Okay, so we're going to do int array, um, array, let's call it new, no, let's not call it new, we'll just call it my array equals, so an array is just a set of data, and it has a data type just like these other variables, um, well, so let's start declaring some data, and we're also going to do some loops through an array. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. All right, so let's uh, let's comment this out real quick. So on your keyboard, if you're on Mac, hold the uh, command key and the forward slash to do a comment on a large block. If you're on Windows or Linux, use control. Um, and then the same control forward slash. All right. So we just commented all that out so it won't run. So this code will no longer display if we do anything. So let's just do S out. Come on, dude. Come on. All right. All right. So this is how you call something in an array. So we have my array. So arrays start at zero. Okay. So let's do my array zero. And what this should give us is one because arrays go from, so we have one, zero. The second spot is one. So this array's length is five, but you go zero, one, two, three, four. So let's just uh, copy and paste this just so you get a good, good idea. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the same thing. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now let's run this. And what we should get is just one, two, three, four, five. Look, one, two, three, four, five. All right, cool. So let's just comment this out real quick. Okay, let's open up this uh, this for loop here. Now let's loop through this array. And guys, I cannot stress this enough. All right, arrays are very, very important. Okay, you need to get the hang of arrays. 
Um, they're super useful. Once you get your fundamentals down, you'll understand how useful arrays are in real world uh, programming and real application um, development. You're going to be using arrays and for loops like crazy. All right. Okay, so so we've already got this for loop set up. So we've got int i equals zero. I is less than. Well, what what are we going to set this the ceiling to? How about my array dot length? So basically, in Java and pretty much every other programming language, it has this uh, some kind of keyword or yeah, just keyword or function name for arrays or any kind of array-like data structure that gives you the length of an array. So this one should be five. Okay, so basically this is going to loop through five times. So we're just going to print out my array. And also I want to explain this real quick. So I so like we did before in this for loop, when we printed out i, you start at zero and you go all the way to the ceiling. So if i is here and it's starting at zero, it's basically doing this, what we did up here, but in a for loop. All right, so let's, uh, let's uncomment this out and just run it to show you that it does the same exact thing. Okay, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five, which is from this block, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. All right, cool. So that's an easy way to iterate through some data, right? You don't have to type out all of this. What if we wanted to add? What if we wanted to make this bigger? Let's do this. Let's do, uh, let me cut this out here because maybe I want to use that. Okay, so my array, let's, let's make all of these one larger. So this will be two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so i plus or equal 1. Okay, we could do that. We'd write it this way. We could write, write it this way. Okay, these these two are exactly the same. Okay. You're going to want to use this syntax more often. Um, I mean, really, you're just going to only want to use this one. It just, nobody, nobody does this. All right, so this is just incrementing it by one. Or you could do uh, minus equals one to decrement it. Or if I, let's say I wanted to do five. Also, if I'm going by, if I'm just incrementing it one time, I could just do this. Oh, whoops. Could just do that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you guys basically what's going on here. So this is just adding each one one time. So let's do a system out my array i. Okay, so let's see if this increments everything. Two, three, four, five, six. Cool. All right, so actually, what if I want to do this? What if I just want to do it all in one line? I could do that. I could do that. Boom. 
two, three, four, five, six. Let me uh, do a little experiment here. And then let me do uh, another system dot out. And do my array i. Let's see what that does. Let's see if doing this actually increments the value by one. Okay, so it looks like it does. So basically what's doing, it's incrementing it once and then just printing this new value. All right, so I was right earlier. Start thinking, hang on, is that right? Okay, so like that, you can loop through arrays, um, loop through arrays, manipulate the data of arrays. Here, I'll put that back. Let me uh, do something else here. get all these printed out so I can okay I'm gonna copy and paste these put these up here um, comment those out if you want to look at that uh, you can take a look at it all right so let's loop through this thing backwards loop through this baby backwards. So you can also loop through arrays backwards or just loop through anything backwards. So remember that decrement thing? We'll use that. So usually we would set the starting point as zero, but we don't want to do that this time. We want to start we want to start at my array dot length. Okay, so i equals my array dot length, which should be five. So then we're gonna go to or equal to zero. Pretty sure that's zero. And then we're gonna do minus minus. Okay, I don't know why it's giving me that. Let's test it out. See if I'm, see if I'm right here. All right, so I'll do my array i. See what this does. See if it does it backwards. Probably should have commented this out before I ran it, but okay. So I is less than I is okay. So hang on a second. And I I is less than or equal to zero. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, here we go, I think. Let's try it now. So I think I figured it out. Ah, oh, what the fuck? All right. So sometimes in software development, you have to uh, use Google a little bit. There's a little taste here of uh, We'll taste here. Okay, so all right, so it was greater than or equal to zero. 
Alright. Let's do this. Let's get this shit going. Alright, so finally shit. Alright, five, four, three, two, one. So that's how you loop backwards. Um you start at the length of the array and also you're gonna wanna go to uh array dot length minus one. Um, I'll explain that here. So since we have zero, one, two, three, and four for your indexes, if you did array dot length, it would just give you five. So if you went to if you're looking for my array to the fifth index, it wouldn't exist. So that's what we got that um, that's why we got that error earlier. It was um, array out of bounds exception. So that's why we have my array dot length minus one, so we can get four and then stop at zero. So that's how you loop backwards. Okay, so so let's do some object oriented stuff. All right, let's make a uh, new package. We're gonna call this um, shapes. So a package is just basically a directory, another file inside of your directory. Okay, so we're gonna create a new Java class. We're gonna create a square class. So this is a public class square. All right, so this is where we get into um, really how you create real programs. All this crap, this is just, you know, this is just your fundamentals. This is just your basics. You got your loops, um, arrays, conditionals, all that crap. All right, like this is this is not how you write a program. You don't just put everything in one file and run that main uh, main function. That's not how you do it in the real world. All right, so what we do is we create classes and this is where object oriented programming begins. So an object is just an instantiation of a class. A class is just classifying an object. So your objects or your classes should be nouns. So basically what that means is they can be persons, places, or things. Um, object oriented programming is the point is to keep things more organized within your code and uh, just be able to make it more readable, uh, make it more structured, and this especially helps out when you're working on large teams. All right, so let's make this square class. All right, so you see how it says this it says public here? So public basically means that it can be, this class can be called anywhere in the program, any files any file in the program can call this square class. So there's also this word, private. So private just means that it can only be accessed through this file. It can only be accessed within this class. It can't be accessed anywhere else unless you create getters and setters. So let's do uh, public string just do square name uh, private um, side length oh private let's do a double um, private double area and here what we can do, since this is a square, we can instantiate this right here or declare what this variable will be. So we'll do side length times four. Okay. And then we'll do perimeter. Oh, wait, 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 what am I thinking? Here, we'll just copy and paste this here. We'll call this one perimeter. Uh, okay, area side length times side length. And there's also built in functions and objects to calculate, um, you know, like 
if I want to do side length squared instead of side length times side length. But we're just going to do it that way, this or this way for now. Okay, so cool. So now in an object or in a class, you have to create something called a constructor. And a constructor is just public whatever you know this thing's name is, whatever this class's name is, just like that. Okay, and also what you can do, we didn't really talk about functions or methods yet. So let's make another one. Let's make another constructor here. So, what am I doing here? What am I doing wrong? Um, oh, okay, that's why. All right, so what we can do is, <coughs> so a function is just a, basically a model. It's a, it's a model of reusable code. So this is basically a function right here. This is a method, but it's a constructor, so it doesn't have a data type. So let's do um, string square name, and these do not, these names here, these are called parameters. They do not have to be the same name as this. I could call this string sn and then set do uh, this dot square name or if you are like, what is this? What is, what is that? Then I can just do sn. So basically a constructor is creating the object. <coughs> it's instantiating a new object to be stored in the memory of the computer. So like I said, it doesn't have to be the same name, but <coughs> you're gonna wanna have a good practice in programming is to have clear names. If it means that you have to type a name like, um, I don't know, square with area of five, or just some some ridiculously long name, like, then do it. If it makes the code more clear to anybody else reading it, type that long ass name. Like, it doesn't matter, just make your code clear. The code should speak for itself, okay? Um, okay, so then we're going to do double side length. Uh, and then those we don't have to instantiate because these are already declared in the class. Okay, so we'll do uh, square name equals square name. Okay, and I'll do this dot just to specify. Okay, and this just means, it's just basically means inside of this class. Okay, so this dot side length equals side length. So if we were gonna create a new object here, um, you would have to pass in a name and then a double for whatever the side length is that you want it to be. Let's uh, let's just mess around with this real quick. Let's uh, comment all of this out. Okay, so what is that? All right, let me uh, actually just get this out of here and put this up here. Okay, so we're gonna create a new square. Okay, so we're going to type square, and then you have to name the square. So basically this is just like a data type. It's like declaring, or it's saying what type this is going to be. And since we we're naming it square, it's going to be a square object equals, and then you're going to say new. New is for objects square 
and then we can leave it like this or we can do this so we have a name just call it square one and then we have and then you'll see IntelliJ will show you what that parameter name is and see how it says square name so that's very clear okay so if somebody else was using this code they would say oh square name alright I'm gonna say I'm gonna say what this square is named okay so now you're gonna do let's just do 5.5 .5. all right side length 5.5 .5. all right so that's how you get or how you create a new object and also we could do it like this you do square square one or let's let's not call it square one since this one's name is square one just for the sake of not confusing anyone else. Let's just call it another square equals new square. So we also don't have to put anything inside of here because we have this constructor without anything in it. And if you have a constructor like that, just leave it like that. So it's not like taking up a bunch of lines. Okay, so what if we want to get this data here? Like, I mean, wouldn't that be a waste if you just, all you could do is call a square and not do anything with it? So let's do, let's create some getters and setters. So let's do, and these are going to be public because we want to be able to use these throughout the code, throughout the code base. So we're going to say public get square name and IntelliJ will guess what you're saying because and look at that it just created the uh, created the getter for me and I'm going to show you another cool thing but we're going to just type out this next one so basically what this is doing public string get square name so you have a string that's the return type functions can return things or this is a method since it's inside of a class okay so public string get square name return square name alright so string you're gonna return a string so if this was we're gonna do the the next one here in a second if it was a double you'd have to return a double value since this is a string we can only return variables or values with the type of string. Now we could do the same thing but with a double. Um, but look, first let me do the uh, setter. Set square name. Alright so basically again we're passing in a value string square name and we're setting we're declaring what this data type is because this dot square name is a string. If this was a double this would not work. This would not work. See that red line? It means it doesn't work. So you have to have the same data type. You have to keep your data types consistent in a function. So if you call a string function, you have to return a string. What if, uh, since, okay, here's a good example right here. All right, so if you don't return anything, if you aren't returning a value, you're just doing something with the data. So like in the setter, you're setting the name of the square. Okay. You aren't returning anything. You aren't using this return and returning a value. You're just doing something with data. You're going to use this keyword void. Okay. Void just means if I have a function where I'm not doing anything, not returning any data. I'm just going to use that void function or the void. It's going to be a void function. Okay, so let me show you something cool with IntelliJ. So you can go up here to code, generate, getter and setter, constructor, getter, setter, getter. And, we're going to click getter and setter. And we are going to shift click the last one to highlight all of these and we're going to click OK. Alright, so now we have all of our getters and setters. Now let's do something with these getters and setters. 
Okay, so since this one's already already has values set through the constructor, I'll show you another way that you can set values. Okay, so we'll do another square dot. Okay, so dot or period. This is just saying inside of this class, we're gonna use this function. Okay, that's all it is. Um, but actually we're gonna use set area, or set um, square name to another square and another square dot set uh, side length to 10, oh, whoops, what am I doing? 10. Point oh. So that's another way that you can set the values of an object. Um, you can use the setters. Now let's uh, say another square dot get square name. What's that going to do? That's just going to print the uh, just going to print the name. So we got to do a system dot out dot print line to actually see the value. Let's just highlight this, cut it, paste it, get rid of that semicolon, oops. Okay, so let's just run this here. See if it works. Another square. So we set that square name to this value and we printed out another square dot square name. So inside of here we have get square name. Here is how we use it. Class name or instantiation of class dot method name. Okay, pretty simple. All right, so now let's uh, let's do one more thing in this tutorial. Let's uh, create a new Java class, and we'll call it Rectangle. Actually, you know what? We are not going to do that. I'm going to go over array lists. Okay, so if you're working with objects. Um, so if you're working with objects, you cannot do this. Okay, you cannot do another square, or hang on, square dot, or square array. How do I do that? Square array array of squares you can't do something like this okay you cannot do this because arrays are only I don't know it's not throwing any errors Okay, so you can't do this, all right? Because arrays in Java are only for primitive data types. So your data types up here, like your ints, your doubles, your strings, your floats, your booleans. Oh, that's something I didn't cover is booleans. Um, so what you have to do is you have to create an array list. So Let's just get rid of this because that is just not something you should use. All right, so let's do uh, array list e. Uh, so inside the array list, you have to declare what kind of object you want it to be. 
Um, let's just call this list of squares equals new and an array list is also an object anything with this capital with a capital name is usually or capital letters as the uh, first letter of the name is usually a class a class name all right so we've got this array list of squares now let's do a list let's add these values to this array Okay, so list of squares dot add. Um, square. Okay, let's add another one. You can only add one object at a time with this, uh, with this here. Square, um, another square. All right, so now let's do let's do something here. Let's do something cool. We're gonna do a for each loop. That's something new, right? All right, so for square square and list of squares. Okay, so what this is doing? This is going to this is how you iterate through array lists or just objects. Um, so basically what the syntax is saying is it's declaring a new variable to be used temporarily in each iteration of the loop. And it's going to be used temporarily to represent an object inside of this list of squares array list. So we're going to have square and another square. So let's just do, man, I do not know why that is not working. Gosh dang. Out dot print line. We're just going to do square dot get square name. We're just going to print out the name of the square. And I'm going to get rid of this line here just because we don't want to print anything that's not inside of that loop all right um, why is this okay well um, square iterator okay so we had to change this variable name because it's already square is already being used up here Okay, so now it'll work. Let's uh, do this. Boom, boom. Square one, another square. Boom. Square one, another square. All right, cool. So that's what you can do to um, with array lists. You can store objects inside of an array list. Uh, you can iterate through them like this. You can do calculations inside of the for loop. Um, so yeah. But yeah, guys, I think uh, I'm gonna bring this video to a close. It's uh, I think it's pretty freaking long right now. But um, yeah, that was a crash course and basically what you learn your first two semesters in computer science. Um, hope you liked it. I know I went fast. Maybe I didn't explain everything that I wanted to explain. Um, <clears throat> a good place from here to go is, um, look up interfaces, um, inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism, um, um, <clears throat> And also just mess around, you know, start making your own programs. If you think of some kind of problem that you can solve, like think it, maybe you need some kind of calculator to calculate some kind of values in your life, um, <clears throat> just make it, you know. And if you're a beginner watching this, which I, I don't know why you would watch this video to the end if you aren't a beginner, but... Um, if you did, um, thanks for watching. But, uh, 
yeah, just start building stuff. Start using these um, these fundamentals that I taught in this class or in this little video. Um, you know, I, I did go pretty quick, but that's for time's sake. Uh, if you like this video, um, I can make some more tutorials. I can make a Java Spring tutorial, a React tutorial, Laravel tutorial, um, basic PHP tutorial, WordPress tutorial. Um, you can just do some quick ones like Bootstrap or something. Uh, Linux command line. Uh, if any of those sound good to you or if you have any suggestions, just comment on this video. Um, there's a lot of things I didn't get to, guys, in this video, so... Um, Use this as a supplement just to get you started. And then if you have any other questions, just start Googling. All right, you got Google as a programmer. Google is your best friend.